In today's video, how you can improve your testosterone levels naturally. Hey guys, what's going on? This is Paul Ravella from ProPhysique.com. In today's video, we're going to answer the question of resolving things like fatigue, um, lack of motivation, and essentially the result of perhaps having low testosterone levels. And I want to do this explaining to you guys that I am still a lifetime natural bodybuilder. Now, at 45 years of age, I realize I'm not immune to aging and perhaps requiring medical help for testosterone treatment. But what I wanted to talk about today was some of the other options, some of the things I've observed as a competitive bodybuilder, as a coach, and I'll put some videos and pictures over here to see the type of, you know, physique I've been able to attain completely lifetime drug free. Um, and it's not to say that I don't appreciate what, you know, obviously I think steroids and those types of things are, are, can do wonderful things. It's just not something I've dabbled in yet. And we'll get into a little bit of why that is the case. But for today's video, I really want to help you guys understand what you can do to perhaps increase your testosterone without the use of perhaps therapies or medical supplements. You know, hormone therapy has become increasingly popular for good reason. There's a lot of valid reasons for it. And today I'm going to talk about why you should and maybe you shouldn't. Okay. I'm going to give you guys my, my reason. So let's first talk about today's question with, I got right here on my Instagram direct message. Then we're going to get into it. I often feel super weak and unmotivated. I'm wondering if it's my age and perhaps my testosterone levels. Both of those things are going to give people fatigue as well as well, lack of motivation. And those are actually signs of low testosterone. So let's talk a little bit about what could be happening. And before we get too deep, I want to talk about what we can do initially to improve our testosterone levels naturally. Okay. There's something that is the opposite of testosterone, something that corresponds in our body negatively to us having more testosterone. And that is cortisol. The response to stress is cortisol. Okay. Is acute stress or short term stress a problem? No, acute stress is a very good thing. Okay. It causes us to well, in some situations survive, but acute stress, things like working out, perhaps getting yelled at can cause us to change our behaviors and improve and get better. Okay. Long-term stress, chronic stress. This is where we run into problems. And if we have chronic stress, chronically elevated levels of cortisol, well, perhaps we're going to have an issue with testosterone. So perhaps you need to look at lifestyle factors. Okay. Outside of anything else, are you getting the required sleep to recover? Are you meeting your daily requirements? If you're not familiar with Maslow's hierarchy of needs, are you getting things like food and shelter? Do you have your bills paid? You know, are you in a healthy relationship? Do you have like a group of friends or, you know, significant others that's kind of making you feel good? Well, that's all necessary. Those are priorities in our lives. And if you're focusing on small things and not the big picture stuff, well, you might be losing out. So the first thing to do is make sure you're taking care of yourself. You know, some of the things that I want to talk about today are two things, resistance training as in bodybuilders, which there's some great studies that show by increasing the amount of resistance training that you're doing, you're going to actually increase the amount of testosterone in your body and not just acutely. Okay. Over the long term. subsequently endurance athletes, there's been some research that shows that over time, because of the fatigue that they take on in their bodies, they might potentially be well, producing too much cortisol and therefore reducing testosterone levels. Now I don't want to put everybody in the same boat here, but my suggestion is just looking at this type of training that you're doing, the type of recovering that you're getting. And you mentioned something here. You said you're feeling weak. A lot of times we push ourselves and we're able to push ourselves very hard, but sometimes just taking a little bit of time off from resistance training. Are you getting enough recovery between workouts? Are you taking enough time between even days that you train? And is your total volume something that you can recover from maximum recoverable volume describes the amount of weight that you can lift in a given week and still recover and improve. There is such a thing as training so much and so hard that you begin to diminish those returns. Okay. You start to train too hard. And so these type of training cycles are something that is important to pay attention to the research is all over the place. It's very clear. Okay. There are so many benefits to, a nutritional approach that is going to allow you to eat in a healthier manner. I found one interesting study that discussed the Western style of dieting, eating, you know, things like breads and sugars and having a correlation with obesity 
and showing that, well, that could reduce our testosterone levels. I think we all kind of agree with that. So how should you eat? Well, I found it interesting in this article that it mentioned people that eat more leafy greens and tend to eat at home more have higher levels of natural testosterone. So perhaps you need to be eating more at home. And I think this is something that I notice among my peers, my friends, the people that put the most effort into their nutrition and their training, they also happen to carry the most muscle and the least amount of body fat. Okay. Now you can't always correlate that with your testosterone levels, but I'm telling you, it's amazing how the body can respond when you give it the appropriate dose of training, the appropriate dose of nutrition and the appropriate dose of recovery. These are all factors that are very important. And when we're programming for our athletes, this is something I pay attention to each week in my check-ins. I ask, how's your recovery? How's your sleep? Because if you push the body really hard, which a lot of times I'm going to be doing as a coach, you need to make sure that you're recovering. Otherwise, that type of chronic stress can lead to a situation where, well, you're gonna struggle and it might be because of hormonal issues. So let's talk about actually adding in something like hormone therapy. Hormone therapy is a stopgap, okay? Now, if it's age-related or if it's medically required, such as somebody has had double testicular cancers and they have no testes, well, there is certainly going to be a need for testosterone supplementation. However, if you are someone who is rather young, living an unhealthy lifestyle, and you get diagnosed with hypogonadism and your doctor or hormone therapist says, hey, let's put you on some hormones to get your testosterone levels back up into a good range. A few things can happen. Two ways. First way, it raises your testosterone levels. You continue to eat and sleep and train the same way. You don't improve your lifestyle. And because you are now getting a supplementation, your body no longer produces the minimal amount of testosterone that it was. Therefore, if you ever come off that medication, you're going to be in a worse place. However, if you use this as an opportunity to say, hey, now that I've got more energy because I'm supplementing with testosterone, I'm going to improve my lifestyle. And I'm going to use this as an opportunity to get myself to a place where I no longer require the medication. Now, if it's age related or if it's, you know, surgery related, well, perhaps that's not an option for you. But I find that what I'm seeing now more than ever is younger and younger men are interested in hormone therapy. And it's to me the same thing as somebody giving you $10,000, okay? If you don't earn the $10,000, you didn't develop the skills you needed to keep it. So you will soon not have that $10,000. However, if you learn through skills how to work and make money, well, you won't only have $10,000, you'll be able to make much more than that. The same thing goes with overall health and well-being. And this is why, as of now, at 45 years old, I've decided to stay natural. I don't, you know, believe me, I think anybody that's been into bodybuilding for any amount of time thinks, wow, it would be great to have a little bit, bit of extra health. But I always look at the long-term consequences of something, okay? What is the benefit gonna be? I'm gonna have some short-term benefit in how I feel and look, probably. But then I'm going to have to make a decision of coming off of these hormones and I'm probably not gonna like it, okay? I've seen a lot of my friends over the years go through the process of you know, starting cycles, getting bigger, and then coming off and getting smaller, okay? And it's not something I've ever been interested in. Sure, it's a slower road when you do not take testosterone. Putting on muscle can be a grueling process, but over the last 25 plus years of training, what I've learned is doing it the way I've done it, although it's taken longer, I don't fluctuate my strength, my muscles, they really remain pretty consistent. And for that reason, I'm grateful. So that's the reason that I feel most people should not get involved in it because unless you're willing to take the steps to change your behavior so that you don't need the medication forever or you're willing to stay on it forever, well, then it might not be the solution you're looking for. Now, the, the gentleman who asked me the question, he's 51 years old, so six years older than me. Um, and he said he's fatigued all the time. So you know, my thoughts would be, we have to look at your overall lifestyle. How is your sleep? How is your diet? How is your training and recovery? Okay. If you're taking care of those four factors, you're going to be able to increase your testosterone naturally. Okay. I promise you going for walks, getting fresh air, doing some resistance training, right? Improving your diet, your macronutrient kind of ratios can really help how much fat are you getting? You have to remember that fat 
the amount of fat that you get in and the quality of fat that you get in is going to be indirectly or kind of directly related to how good your hormone profile is because those those fats that you take in are a cascading effect and they turn into hormones okay so your diet is going to have a big reason for how successful you are and for that reason i've created a free macro calculator i'll link it below so that's going to allow you to kind of plug in a bunch of information get some really good macronutrients for you and i also have some free programs for download for beginners for intermediates the point being start today on a campaign to improve your testosterone naturally by looking at what your daily routine is like are you exercising multiple times per week are you eating and sleeping in a manner that is going to allow you to get better? Or are you just looking for a reason to go to a doctor, find out that you have low testosterone and therefore get some supplementation? No judgment if that's where you're at. I just want you guys to know that there's options and I certainly don't think it's a requirement unless it's medically necessary. All right guys, that's gonna be it for me today. I hope you're having an awesome day and I'll talk to you tomorrow.